kind of an emergency recording session here because I have actually triggered Mr. Tardis enough for him to respond to me on my video. <laughs> oh, I, I've, I'll have i admit I've watched a few minutes of this and it got a good giggle out of me, so yeah, I'll, I'll get on with it. Let's have a, let's have a listen. I was going to say because we don't know what the content is. 59 minutes? Jesus Christ. Okay, let's... ...of the video itself is. But this is Melon Rattler who has titled a video, Doctor Who has a Mr. Retardus problem. What a great way to make a first impression. <laughs> show that your, your good faith engagement with me are actually- I'm not gonna lie, bro. I don't know if you'll see this one, but I thought it was fucking hilarious. Like, I don't see everything through the lens of political identity or bottled political bullshit lens of being offended. I thought it was a funny joke. But you know, take offense to it all you want, bro. I thought it was a good joke. Actual tangible issues to have by having an ableist slur in the chat and calling me a oh fucking now, christ see what this person gentleman because of course it's going to be a guy has to say as sorry how do you how do you know i'm a guy i could be trans bro i could be a trans man don't assume my gender i just want to pause it there i fucking hate listening to my own voice and listening to my own oh god it's so cringe i oh, know yeah, yes, I, how, how ironic, he doesn't like listening to himself. Yes, whatever. It's, it's just one of those things I just cringe at, but I'll carry on. Unlike Mr. Tardis, he probably really enjoys listening to himself. So instead... Uh, okay, so obviously if you didn't like the Christmas Day special, whatever, that's fine. It Not many people did, bro. No one tuned in. It's subjective, it's his prerogative, whatever. Uh, I will say the Doctor Who supposedly having an enhanced budget is not going to be kicking in until Series 14 proper. Right, whoa, 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 right. So the big overhaul budget increase won't, won't be taking place until the next proper full season. So the 60th anniversary specials, the big event that was bring, supposed to bring everybody back, that's not, that's not the moment you play your trump card and have the big budget and impress everybody. It's the next season when nobody's going to have any faith anymore, and that's when you show the true real effects. Okay, judging by the trailer that we got, I doubt uh, there's going to be any kind of big increase in budget because it still looks like shit. Talk about. Usually I can get angry and sit here and even talk to my friends about how much I hate the show and how much it winds me up. But now it's this bit got a laugh. Where I'll give you that. <laughs> Sorry, you think? Can you imagine like just being friends with this guy and it's like God's sake, I just hate Doctor Who. So just hate Doctor Who. <laughs> I just hate what they're doing. Like he was dancing around like a fucking fairy. I'm not gonna lie, bro. That's exactly what it's like. I'm sat there coping. Oh, I'm not gonna lie. That's exactly what it's like. I'm sat there coping, shaking. Oh my god, it's so shit. I'll admit, I probably do annoy them from time to time. I probably do annoy them. Like obviously, this guy is no fun at parties. I can guarantee. Hey, I'm pretty fun at parties. Don't you? Don't assume. Don't assume. I guarantee you that his friends are sick of him talking about Doctor Who. That is true. There's I'll no give him that. Good. There are those that call this. I mean, I'm kind of waiting for him to actually substantiate. Oh, don't pause then. Here. Like, I'm not really sure how the church on Ruby Road could be shown as propaganda in any. Oh, mm, okay. Any way, shape, or form, it was basically a apolitical fun fairy tale. Anything that comes out of the BBC is usually fucking propaganda, bro. It's just you just kind of loop it all in together because that's what the BBC is. Um, story with goblins and singing and you know you know rescuing babies from churches and stuff so i'm not you know obviously i'm not really sure what he's on about and i doubt he'll sort of you know i didn't even think of that rescuing babies from churches from yeah ironically it's the kids we want to keep away from the alphabet community though i'd rather put my kid in a church than in in the hands of an alphabet blow bro like you imagine you're, he does sound like marvin the paranoid android and hitchhiker's guy to the galaxy <laughs> i think you ought to i think you ought to know i'm feeling very depressed well we have something that should take your mind off things. It won't work. <laughs> I have an exceptionally large mind. No, I'm f I can't help having this monotone voice, bro, okay? Can't help it. I apologize if it offends you. Yes, I know. Come on. It's pretty funny, though. I'll give you that. Feeling very depressed about the state of Doctor Who. Well, I was pretty depressed making this video, I'm not gonna lie. It looks like he's gonna break down crying. Oh, yeah, he, he does, absolutely. Mainly because there was probably, like, black people or trans people in Doctor Who. and that Oh, come on. Right, no. I don't care that the Doctor's black. I don't care. The Doctor can be black. Whatever. You know? I just wanted him to be interesting and actually play the doctor and not the local fucking gay raver who wants to go to the nightclub every night. That's what I wanted. Don't care that he's black. I'll go even a step further. You can have a trans character in the show, right? But as long as you make them interesting and, you know, don't have a grown man playing a kid. Most people will probably, you know, look past that shit. As long as you entertain us and have a good character in there, who cares? 
Um, it was him calling me a shill time and time again. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I did that for a bit of it. I, I, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't help myself when responding to your tweets because there's nothing I hate more than a shill begging for a job or someone virtue signaling to make themselves look a bit better. Like I said that I liked Wild Blue Yonder, and he said, "God, you're a fucking shill, aren't you?" And then <laughs> he also responded to me saying, "Hell yeah, I've made it," because I was featured in an independent article about. Don't you think that's a bit cringe, bro? The fact that you're tweeting that out like you're bigging yourself up like that jesus christ might have some fucking self-awareness also this is the same guy that's uh, tweeting out begging for money from his fans uh, but you know we're the cringe ones okay and i mean he didn't provide to me any evidence as to why i'm supposedly a shill other than i liked something he doesn't like so you know now the evidence to the fact that you are a shill is that you're pretending to like this we all know you're pretending to like this bro no one with a mind or with a set of balls will could even fathom watching a show this feminine unless you are yourself a lying shill. The quality is not up to opinion, the quality is objectively shite. If it was a political episode that was still entertaining to watch and I disagreed with it, I wouldn't be on here complaining. I'd be like, okay, it's still a good show. I don't, I don't agree with the politics, but I could at least big up the production quality. It still looks like shit. It's written, it's, it's written like shit. It sounds like shit. It's it's objective at this point. No, there's no there's no opinion. There's no debate about it. It is this fucking show is dead. Let's have a listen to this treacle's little fucking opinion then. So there we go. This is <laughs> we are two minutes in. He has not actually put forward. Oh, he's so triggered. This bit, fucking. I, I I watched up until this point. He was so triggered at this fucking quote slur. I, I thought it was a play on words. It's not technically a slur. Technically. That's, that's, how I, that's how I judge it in my mind, bro. <laughs> He's so fucking triggered. ...but an argument, and he decides, okay, in order to show that I'm going to approach this topic maturely in good faith and just go over the facts and the logic or whatever, um, I'm just going to use an ableist slur in the video. 99% of people say this word in real life, bro. Stop pretending online. Stop pretending for your audience. This is why I call you a shill. No notes. 10 out of 10. I thought it was funny. We'll keep it, we'll keep it polite. Let's actually listen to his opinions and the power of facts that he's about to bring to the table. So, <laughs> he's so desperate to have a jab at me. All right, on retrospect, I probably shouldn't be insulting you straight away. I should actually have something. I should actually listen to what you have to say. So yeah, you got me there. I shouldn't be doing that. Couldn't help myself though. Bit riled up from, I, shills just rile me up just a little bit, but carry on. He, like I've not even actually said anything that bad yet. But he's so desperate to just sort of like, Get in there real quick, like a little, like a little snide comment before the things even started. It's so funny. Snide comments. Do have to say, reasoning for the BARB is not for clout. It is not for the department, and the BARB puts their methodology on their website. But to surmise, like I mentioned earlier, the actual reasoning for the BARB is not for clout. It is not for point scoring. It is for industry leverage it is for industry knowledge and insight so that people know what is being watched the bbc is a public service broadcaster so obviously it wants high viewing figures but it also as a public service broadcaster wants to know what people are actually watching it wants to know if people are watching something and actually sticking with it it doesn't matter if a show is watched by 10 million people but it's only watched by one minute it's not something that will be worth investing in unless people stick around with it the actual metric that i have been told from people within the bbc is that a 40% viewed video on the iPlayer counts as a view. You have to watch 40% of a program because, you know, one minute doesn't really matter. Like, if you have like an hour and a half TV movie. Like okay. So, according to you and people within the BBC, it's not, okay, it's not 30 seconds, it's 40%. So, people aren't making it halfway through the episode until they're turning this shite off. That's what you're saying. Okay, you really got me there, bro. Okay. So, according to the BBC, the BBC is doing great. That's what we're hearing. Okay. Like okay. So, we're still not taking in the one-week consolidation numbers as a viewing figure because that is not what you determine success as. You determine success for a TV show as the 24 hours, that one night, that night when people tune in, how many people you have convinced to sit together and watch the television as a family or as an individual or as a couple or whatever. That is the time you consider that TV show or judge it as a success. And 4.73 million 
for the Christmas special. All-time failure for the Christmas specials. You can spin it however you want. Highest fifth rated drama or whatever. Or the Star Beast. The viewing figures dropped over the three weeks, bro. Dropped. I still haven't got to that bit. But yeah, we'll, we'll carry on. We'll carry on. Percent drop. I mentioned that in this video that he's talking about. But also, how can I fail to mention it when I'm halfway through the sentence that I'm currently talking about? I've not omitted it. I just haven't gotten to that bit yet. Like I said, this guy is just so eager to sort of like jibe in and, and talk over or whatever that he's not actually listening to what I'm saying. True, I do, I do, I, I am, I am like that. I'll give you that, yeah. See, I can self-criticize, bro. I am eager to jump in to talk to you, yes. Or talk, respond to you, should I say. Go on. Or engaging with the points. And couldn't even peak Peter Capaldi numbers. David Tennant peak was just over 5 million and over the one week period got 7 million figures, I'm pretty sure, 7 million. Wait, you don't have the figures in front of you. Like, fair enough if you don't know them off the top of your head or if you've not memorized them by heart, but we're here talking about the viewing figures and you're not on camera, you are recording this. Do you not have them next to you on a note or? No, no, I didn't. I was doing it off the top of my head. Is that is that is that a crime, bro? I, I, I'm sorry. I wasn't. I'm not this fucking top end YouTuber. I was doing it for my own benefit. I was pretty accurate, though. I think I was pretty fucking accurate. But yes, I didn't have the viewing figures in front of me. No, okay. It's, if he had the figures in front of him, he'd know that that's not true. One thing I like about Wikipedia is that Wikipedia. Wikipedia. 60th anniversary specials were not as good as even the weakest Peter Capaldi stories. Okay, let's look at that. 7.61 million for the Star Beast. Let's go. No, no, no. Not 7.61. Not 7.6. Not 7.34, mate. 5.08 million. But I am about to concede because you are about to get me on some things. 7.61 million is better than every episode of series 10, barring the Christmas specials. Better than every episode of series 9, once again, barring the Christmas specials, and... Considering this is all one-week ratings, let's go back and actually look at some of the overnight ratings for some of these episodes. I'll say the best episode of, what is this, season 9? Yeah, season 9. I've had a look around, it's a bit hard because it's such a long time ago, but the overnight ratings apparently for Heaven Sent, the best episode of series 9, is 4.5 uh, 4 4.51 million. So yeah, I'll concede. I was wrong. This episode, well, the Star Beast, technically did better than one of the best episodes in Peter Capaldi's era. I'll, con I'll concede. You got me there, bro. I've got to go by my own logic, and judging by my own logic, I was wrong here. However, though, this was in the time of the dwindling Doctor Who era anyway, because people were tuning out, including myself. I didn't fully get back into Doctor Who until, or should I say, it didn't fully catch my attention again until they announced a woman to play the Doctor, and I was like, okay, I'll tune in to see the big revamp of the show. And it turned out, obviously, to be a bastardization of everything Doctor Who. But these ratings you have to take into account. These are the strongest the new era is going to get. These were the big, the big fucking going for the fences era ratings. You've got David Tennant, Catherine Tate. You've got the new Doctor, the new Doctor's first story. You've got the old gang back together. You've got Russell T. Davis on board, and your strongest ratings just dwindle and dwindle and dwindle and dwindle. Unfortunately, Peter Capaldi was not helped by. The writing of the time, it wasn't as bad as it is now. Like, Jesus Christ, the writing then is like gold standard compared to now. But I will concede, I was wrong about the overnights. Peter Capaldi's ratings were worse than I remember them being. A few I don't think it's good to use Wikipedia as a reliable source, bro, because anyone can jump in and change these figures because it's Wikipedia. You episodes, oh, he, he's just fucking wrong. Like, you just look at the empirical, like, data. You just look at the figures here. Like, <laughs> whoa, 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 okay, let's go back then. So I just saw he, that. He's just fucking what was wrong. that? Like, you just look at the... Right there, boom. Deep breath. Over a week, you've got 9.17 million, right? Shooty Gatwa's first episode. Do you notice something? I do. Um, 4.73 million. It's probably because you know, most of the country don't want to sit down and waste their Christmas night watching a load of shite. This is supposed to be your Doctor debut episode, and you got fuck all, bro. Fuck all. What's the coat behind that? And I swear to God, if you come to me and say, oh, well, times have changed. People don't watch the television anymore. Bullshit. 
absolute rubbish. If a show is good enough, people will show up. Anniversary series. Especially got a figure right there just proving him wrong. Fuck me, 10 years ago. Oh, that makes me feel old. But David Tennant. David Tennant couldn't even crack 8 or 9 million. That proves the state of this show. What's the fucking cope there? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm guessing that the Peter Capaldi era nobody watched and people hated and was woke or stupid and what nonsense and propaganda or whatever, but... Oh, oh, uh, no, Peter Capaldi's era was... It did have a few good gems in there, but it was starting to lean towards uh, some cringe one-liners. You can see the elements starting to sneak in. This is just during the start of the woke bloody era in TV, unfortunately, because everyone lost their mind when Trump got in charge. But yeah, Peter, I, I don't hate Peter Capaldi's era. I think... He was one of Peter Capaldi is one of the most misused actors to play the Doctor. Unfortunately, I felt like he was starting to get into his rhythm by series ten and absolutely shafted in the back for Jodie Whittaker. Dude, oh my God! What a he, dude's an actual joke, and he 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 has the tenacity to call me retardus. Come on. <laughs> yeah, let's pick the back then because it was losing back then as well. I didn't argue that it was doing better. I just argued that the metrics and how we judge success has changed over the past fifteen or so years. No, it hasn't. Success is based on viewing figures and how many people turn up. It's not changed. You can cope with this modern technology rubbish. You it, you judge success by how many people sit down and watch your product. Like, I don't want to interrupt this guy before he's done the whole book. It's like he's doing that to me, so I apologize for doing that to him in turn. But like, this is an edited video. I'm doing a live stream. You know, it, it, give me a little bit of a break. For example, yeah, I'll I'll give you a break, bro. I fumble over my words all the time. For example, was Doctor Who when it came back in 2005 in the David Tennant era was that considered a failure or a flop or whatever because it wasn't besting the late era Tom Baker era you know the Graham Williams era with City of Death and Destiny of the Daleks Destiny of the Daleks to this day is still the most watched Dalek story in terms of the pure viewership who watched it on broadcast obviously that comes with a lot of associated context but the barometer for success and how you measure success in a TV landscape is going to vary differently based on decade and it's made even more complicated with the advent of streaming. No, if Shooter Gatua again got the, the David Tennant numbers, I would call it a success. Stop moving the goalposts. David Tennant didn't do as good as Tom Baker, but it's, that does not make it a success. Bullshit. We can see the little viewing figures here, so let's go with the actual numbers. Uh, five. When he said bullshit, I assumed he was going to say that these are lies or whatever, some Jewish conspiracy or something. That's typically... Right. I know nothing of this apparent Jewish conspiracy. I just don't determine success over a week-long rerun. People catching up or whatever you want to say, because you can't prove these are, re are new people. You can't prove that. So you have to go with the actual meat and potatoes, lad. Yeah, you've got your meat and potatoes, your overnights. That's the... Every single fresh new person is coming into tuning into your show. I'm saying you can't say the. I'm saying you can't call these numbers reliable because you can't prove whether they are new people. It could be people watching on a rewatch. Not everything is this political fucking weapon to use. Fucking Jewish conspiracy. What the fuck are you talking about? He's just dismissing the idea of seven day viewing figures, which. Absolutely, I'm dismissing because that's not how TV has ever worked. We watch, we go for the overnights. If your TV's not getting viewing figures, your TV show's cancelled. That's how it's always worked in Hollywood and or TV. It's how it's always worked. We can look at and we can rationalise it and talk about it in the context of broader TV shows. But this is like a forty percent drop over the course of these episodes. And here's Mel and Rattler getting completely bent out of shape over a four percent drop from one episode to another. It's it, it's not. I've, they were, st I didn't even think of this, they were just standard episodes of television. This is your 60th anniversary. Go back and look what the 50th anniversary was drawing in, mate, worldwide. Go have a look. Compare. What, what damage has been done in 10 years? Which on form of hope that I had. Once again, he could have edited that out. But he says that he took, he, he took issue with the propagandizing. He took issue with Yasmin Finney being in the show and Rusty Davis being a you know, lecturing or whatever. But the supposed lecturing or whatever of the Star Beast, you know, the pronoun scene, that's like 30 minutes into the episode. And then there's the whole male presenting time law thing, which for the record, I don't like the male presenting time law. The entire episode was centered around trans people being like a higher form of being because he or he or she or whatever thought of something that the doctor couldn't even think of the idea of letting go of power because you're a woman and not male presenting yeah it's not it's not propaganda though it's, not, it's, def it's definitely not propaganda line i talked about that in depth in my own video about it so i'm not you know you know i'm not a shill in terms of that particular woke messaging or whatever but he says oh i How gave it a chance 10 minutes gave it a chance but but Yasmin Finney was in the first few scenes of the episode, so his issue just is trans inclusion. His his issue from what we can 
the way you've uh, the way you've included trans people is my issue, and how patronizing it is, and how see through Russell T Davis actually is. Jesus, man, it's not it's not we hate trans people. It's the way you're representing them. Rep represent yeah, representing the way you're representing them and projecting your own hatred onto us. We just want to be entertained. We don't want to be lectured. How many times do we have to say it? Like pretty explicitly. Completely destroyed any form of hope that I had left. Yeah, this is of course the oh, seven facts, mate. In the let's hear the, let's hear the code. This is basically a full arc. This is basically a full run of hour-long episodes, which tend to do really. What a waste! Bringing back David Tennant and Catherine Tate and doing absolutely nothing with them, and undoing one of the best storylines of modern Who, the Doctor Donna story arc. Yeah, good job. The episode. I mean, it already was a success going week to week, but we have seen from TV shows like Luther from. Uh, Peter Kay's car show. I, I talk about that in this very video from what I remember, but I've definitely talked about it before. TV shows like Luther massively benefited from first episode broadcasts on the actual day, and then you can view all of the episodes on the iPlayer. ITV are having a massive success right now with their post office drama as well. Like, uh, the first episode will get incredibly strong viewing figures, but the other ones might taper off because people watched it all in one go. The uh, the Thief, the Man, and the Canoe a year or two ago on ITV also benefited from this binge model. Like, the, the data's all there. We can look at the empirical BARB figures from BBC and ITV shows that benefit Benefit, definitely in the short term at least for having the bingeable shows all viewable in one go Th that's what the data says does this guy just have uh no week to week programming will always beat the binge model it becomes a conversation wherever you go at, like say you go to work you go oh, have you seen this and it becomes like a slow burner the slow burner the binge model is a microwave meal the week to week model is a home cooked meal that takes for floyd i'm just taking a bit of a floyd mayweather line there more effort, more risk, equals more reward. The binge model is meh. You forget about it after a week when you've watched it. And it ain't woke, and it ain't preachy. Because that's, that's what exactly If someone says to me, Doctor Who ain't woke, Doctor Who ain't preachy, I will question whether or not they even watched a Doctor Who. <laughs> like Doctor Who is, has had political things to say, but again, always put the entertainment ahead of what the political standing was. Genuine. Russell T. Davis has always hated the Tories, like the alien, what the Saladin and government. Yeah, so yeah, it's obviously, obviously what he's trying to say. But it was entertainment ahead of the political messaging. That's it's fucking not rocket science. Please. What would have happened if the Star Beast came out and it was an absolute fucking triumph and it was absolutely amazing, shut people like me up and entertained everybody? We'd probably be looking at very, very high number viewing figures for Christmas. Why this? Reminder: I know that this video came out before. Actually, no, this video came out on January third, so we did already have the overnight figures, but we didn't have the seven-day figures for the Church on Ruby Road. The Church on Ruby Road, just to remind you folks, was the number one scripted drama on Christmas Day, the very first time oh, Doctor Who has ever held that title. Four point seven three million on Christmas Day. Stop coping, jeez, man, Jesus. So. It turns out that people watched trans positive Doctor Who, woke Doctor Who, cheap Doctor Who, Disneyfied Doctor Who, it whatever, was the one and thought, yeah, drama. it's pretty good. Let's go. Let, let's watch the Christmas special with Shooty Gatwa. Yeah, let's yeah, go for it. No one's going to watch this show. But the future Doctor Who, by the way, he says it's in safe hands. This show will be cancelled within three years. I'll put fucking. I'll put. I'll, if this cunt wants to reach out to me, I'll put how much every money on the line. I'll put. I'll put anything on the line. It will be fucking dead in three years. Shooty Gatwa is the last Doctor. It'll be dead. Disney will fucking can this shit. I can't afford to put. They can't afford to put shit on their live subscription service anymore. It's not going to happen. How much, mate? Reach out to me. Reach out to me, bro. 100 quid. Three years' time, the show's gone. 16th okay, it's the 8th of January, 2024. If Doctor Who has not been cancelled by the 8th of January, 2027, Melamala, I'll take you up on that. Ooh. If it has been cancelled within the next three years, as in there's no more Doctor Who taken off the air, Doctor Who's gone, whatever, BBC aren't making it, it's gone, cancelled. Even if it's on hiatus or whatever, okay. Um, if it is cancelled in three years' time, Melon Rattler, I will donate £100 to a charity of your choosing. If it would like you to donate £100 to the Mermaids charity, a trans charity in the UK, £100. 34 demographic. Is You're on. But I've been here. Firstly, millennials and TikTokers can also be fans. That, that is true, but I'm talking about the core audience that left. That was your job. The 60th anniversary was to bring people back. But they're going for the new generation, Gen Z, because they think the Gen Z is woke and all this crap. Their kids aren't as stupid as you think they are, bro. They'll watch this shit and go, no, I've got better things to watch because the, the amount of entertainment you can watch now, just for free on YouTube, you don't have to tune into this crap anymore. You've got five minutes. Like, well, any kid turning this on, it's going to be like five minutes, eh, off, crap. Say demographic of the show that you can appeal to, of course. Like, But also, let's not... Take, okay, I'll let him finish the point. I'll, I'll let him finish the point. If 60 years, you fucking dimwit locked in <laughs> he didn't even make a fucking <laughs> this guy 
for me. Oh, God, I hate listening to my old self on it. I can't put into words. Fake quote. Yeah, I think that was a fake quote because it's politico for you. It's not politics for you. This turned out to be a fake quote. This wasn't true. This was a fake quote. It just got circulated. It was just very funny. How important. Yeah, I, I'm actually, I think I did get baited here. I'm not sure if this is actually real. But the best thing about the internet and time, things can swing back around. And um, wasn't David Tennant recently wearing this trans what LGBT badge for whatever? Putting his kid in some pro trans, no, what pro LGBT shirt at ten years old. His kid's apparently non-binary. Yeah, this man's a fucking lost cause. I may, I may have been baited, but my point still originally stands. David Tennant's a bit of a coward, pandering to an audience that doesn't really exist for Doctor Who, using his children as a um, big. Oh, look at me! I am an ally. Yeah, what a guy that is. And his bean-headed misses on Twitter. Fucking oh, Jesus Christ. Look, the celebrities are like literally the boys. They are literally these fake people that will do anything for a bit of clout with the public or this 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 uh, this audience that they believe exists. These celebrities don't believe in what you believe, like you don't believe in the alphabet community, Mr. Tyler. You're doing it to panda. They are doing more harm than good, and most normal people can see that. There's nothing wrong with being gay, nothing wrong with being trans, nothing wrong with being gay, nothing wrong with being trans, nothing wrong with being black, whatever. The people that have, the normal people don't have a problem with these things. It's when you project your own bullshit onto us and want us to be as hardcore allies like you are. We just want to get on with our lives. If it's normal, treat it as a normal thing. Don't point the, the magnifying glass on it and expect everyone to clap like a fucking seal like you do. Jesus Christ of people who are anti-trans the vast majority of people in the uk about 60 to 70 percent sometimes 75 percent depending on the polling are either pro-trans or are indifferent to trans people so yeah probably most normal people are, are too busy to even comprehend what the fuck's going on again i'll repeat and i'll end the video with this one there's nothing wrong with being trans there's nothing wrong with being gay there's nothing wrong with exploring yourself as you get older because growing up is confusing it's naturally, you're naturally finding yourself and trying to self-identify or what you are, what you like, what your preferences are, and what you, what you enjoy doing. And I have a problem with this shit because you're projecting your own shit onto kids and confusing the fuck out of them. It's social engineering from these freaks, these fucking freaks that think they know best what's better for your kids. But yeah, that was a fun laugh, wasn't it? Mr. Tardis' response. Oh, God, it's, it was a tough listen. I'm not going to lie, I didn't listen to all of it because... It was like a lot of waffling and a lot of BBC dick riding and a lot of coping with the one week metrics and all that. Uh, but yeah, this is a bit of an emergency one. So yeah, like, <laughs> like if you liked what I hear, liked if you enjoyed Mr. Tardis' little ramble, comment if you disagree with me, subscribe if you want to hear more. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye now.